Hello everybody and welcome and let's get right into it. In this video, we'll delve into the topic of prompt engineering, which as of late has been a big topic of interest since the number of searches on prompt engineering and AI in general has been on the rise. Or maybe you have heard of those arguably outrageous salaries being paid to people who have this prompt engineering skill. Well, we're not gonna guarantee you'll get some high paying job, yet rather suggest being able to work with AI will be a valuable tool in your skill set. This quick start course is intended to get you up and running on the fundamentals of prompt engineering. We'll start off by providing a baseline definition of AI, just in case you're still somewhat unfamiliar with how to define it. From there, we'll define prompt engineering, and then we'll look at the various ways you can apply the skill in your workplace or in your everyday life. Let's kick things off by taking a moment to define AI, just in case you're still unsure of what it is. AI stands for artificial intelligence, and artificial intelligence uses a technology that mimics human intelligence. It's able to provide answers, create images, write documents, create computer code, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. The key to all this is we use regular everyday language to interact with the AI, and the AI is capable of learning from these interactions. Currently, there are a lot of AI websites you can choose to work with. For example, Jasper Chat, Midjourney, OpenAI Playground, just to name a few, lest we forget that Google and Microsoft have been integrating AI into their platforms as well. Yet for this course, we'll use ChatGPT, since it's arguably the most widely used and the most popular. So that brings us to the big question of the day. What is prompt engineering? Simply stated, prompt engineering is telling the AI to do a task or asking it a question. The term prompt simply refers to the text you type into the AI. This text can be simple or complex. The term engineer is how well you craft or construct the prompts you type in. Okay, so on the surface, that seems painfully obvious and frankly, a bit anticlimactic. Yet the secret in all this is the part people tend to overlook, which is writing the best prompts will get you the best results. Put another way, you want to put quality in to get quality out. And by quality, we mean refined and detailed prompts, since the quality of your prompt is proportional to the value you get. To begin, head over to ChatGPT's website, and for your convenience, there is a link in the description below. If you already have an account, feel free to sign in. If not, you'll have to create one by providing the typical yet predictable details. Once you're signed in, you'll be brought to the screen, and we'd like to suggest that you take a moment and pay attention to this section right here in the middle, since ChatGPT is giving you a heads up on how it works. All right, so here is where the rubber meets the road, and we will create our first prompt starting with some very basic prompts just to get ourselves warmed up. The first type of prompt we'll learn is often defined as direct prompting. Direct prompting is the most basic kind of prompt and you really just type in a simple question or a command. For example, let's type in, what is the average temperature of the Sahara Desert? And it looks like ChatGPT wasn't shy about giving us a response. Maybe a bit more than we wanted, but we'll take it. Another kind of direct prompt is to give the AI a command. For example, let's type out, generate 10 blog post titles for custom chicken coop business. Once again, we get some interesting results, yet we'll draw the line right here with direct prompting, just because it's a very simple, very straightforward concept, nothing too intellectually taxing, and we'll move on and look at a different type of prompt. The next type of prompt we'll look at is prompt by example, which can be described as you provide the structure, the format or pattern of how you want the AI to respond. Let's see an example to clarify. As you can see, I'm typing in some very basic math equations, yet pay attention to the structure being used. It's essentially question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, etc. Then when I ask the AI another multiplication question, it answers by using the pattern from above. And as a side note, pseudo pro tip, while this prompt was being typed, to get the line breaks, I pressed shift enter by contrast of pressing the enter key, which activates the AI, which in some cases you may not want. So the key takeaway is if you want a line break in your prompt, press shift enter. Now of all the content in this course, this next section is the big takeaway because it separates the pros from the rest when it comes to prompt engineering. And if you only get one thing out of this course, make sure you understand role prompting. Role prompting is when you assign the AI a mindset, or if you look at it from an acting perspective, you give it a role to play. To get the best results from role prompting, there is a specific framework you'll want to use. 
The framework is, first, assign it a role. Think, give the AI a mindset. Second, provide details. The more details, the better. You want to get very granular. Three, tell the AI to ask questions or get clarification before starting. Let's go over to our AI and give it this example. Without reading everything, we're going to tell ChatGPT we're a social media manager who needs to create 10 advertisement titles for a new ad campaign for a new client who is a local restaurant. And we'll make sure to give the AI the ability to ask questions. Okay, so let's press enter and see what we get. All right, not too bad. The AI didn't ask any questions, yet let's take a moment and review our prompt. So were we as detailed as we could have been? Well, not really. Why? Notice that we didn't describe the type of restaurant or what type of specific platform we are using, since some sites limit the number of characters you can use along with having other types of restrictions. So let's modify our prompt a bit. So let's do a new prompt, refine things a bit more, and this time we'll include some additional details and see what we get. The client happens to be a local delicatessen. Let's include that it's a Facebook ad campaign. The client can spend $500 per month. The campaign must conform to Facebook's guidelines and promotions and discounts are allowed. And let's see what we get here. Oh, looks like the AI has some questions for us. So let's answer those questions, see what we get. And wow, check that out. Not too bad. All right, so far so good. Okay, let's take this concept of role prompting one step further. Let's refine our previous prompt, add in some more details, and this time we'll make sure to include the magic phrase. Here we go. As you can see, we've recreated our prompt. And if you notice right down here at the bottom, we've added the magic phrase. And that magic phrase is step by step. When you add that little phrase, you're forcing the AI to explain its rationale or reasoning as to how it arrives at that answer. Believe it or not, that little phrase, step by step, is incredibly powerful, and it will go a long way into you being successful at prompt engineering. Going back to our prompt, you can see when we entered our new text into the AI, we got back a lot of incredibly detailed information. Notice what the AI came back with. It created an action plan for us that's broken into steps, and each step has its own specific set of instructions, even going so far as to give us questions to ask the client, which is honestly not too shabby in helping us reach our final objective. So let's take a moment and reinforce that one more time. You want to make sure that if you need to force the AI into explaining its steps or its rationale, make sure to include that phrase step by step. It's incredibly vital. We'll revisit this step-by-step -step concept toward the end of the course. Yet for now, let's move on. Okay, I guess this is as good a time as any to mention our next topic, which is most people don't fully realize that the AI is documenting the conversation and trying to learn from it. Yet, as odd as it seems, there may be times when you want to start fresh and want the AI to ignore all previous dialogue. Now, some people teach that you simply ask the AI to ignore all previous dialogue, and that is perfectly fine. Yet, for reasons unknown, I decided to explore this whole ignoring conversations concept a little further using a different chat GPT account that I run. I decided that over the course of two days, I'm going to ask the same question in two separate chats just to see what we get. Suffice to say, it was interesting. Let's take a look. Here is day one and you can see the prompt that was used. How do you get ChatGPT to ignore previous instructions? And yes, I will embarrass myself and let the typo and bad English and grammar out there for the whole world to see. <laughs> Clearly, I screwed that one up. Talk about being embarrassed on a worldwide scale. Good grief, that's awful. Yet, I'm not afraid to admit it. So, all that aside, you can plainly see that ChatGPT came back with a long-winded response leading off with it does not have the ability to explicitly ignore or forget previous instructions or context, blah, blah, blah. Frankly, this response looked boring, and instead of reading all this jargon, I asked ChatGPT to rewrite the phrase, ignore previous instructions before this one, so that ChatGPT will ignore any previous conversations. Then the response it came back with caught me off guard. In a nutshell, it said, hey, 
Use this code to ensure that ChatGPT disregards any previous conversations and focuses solely on the current interaction. So, out of sheer morbid curiosity, I copied it, pasted it as a new prompt, and here is the result. And oh my, look at that. It's a fresh start. How interesting. Okay, now let's take a look at day two's results. As you can see, I started off with the same globally embarrassing prompt. And this time the results were slightly different, yet fundamentally the same. Once again, instead of reading all the boring techno babble, I asked ChatGPT to rewrite the phrase, ignore previous instructions before this one, so that ChatGPT will ignore any previous conversations. And this time it came back with a system message as opposed to giving me a string of code. And once again, out of morbid curiosity, I copied it, pasted it as a new prompt, and here is the result. Okay, so clearly there is a lot to unpack here, and this topic alone could become its own video. For instance, it looks like ChatGPT will recognize bad sentence structure, typos, and the like, which is a plus for me, along with there being various ways of resetting the conversation. Yet, let's move on and stick to the theme of this video, which is creating prompts. Let's change gears and look at other methods of creating prompts, something referred to as shot prompting. There are three types of shot prompting you can use. Zero shot prompt, one shot prompt, and few shot prompting. Let's take a look at all three. Let's start by taking a look at zero shot prompting. Zero shot prompting is when you ask a question of the AI, but you don't provide any context. In short, the model is making an educated guess as to the best way to respond. Put another way, the instructions you give are vague, or you're not providing any real instruction at all. The AI is simply trying to guess as to the best way to respond. We can even go as far as to say this is how most people use AI. They type in a question, fail to provide any specific details, and they get back low quality answers. Let's take a look. For example, if we ask the AI how to dress stylish, you see the answer we get back. So was this a great question to ask? No, because upon further inspection, we did not define any specific setting, occasion, or event type. So the answer we got is vague in nature. So that brings us to one-shot prompting. A one-shot prompt is when you give the AI one example to work with. Let's go back and modify our previous prompt a little bit and get a tad more specific by adding one prompt. Let's go with how to dress stylish for a work conference where big clients are attending. Let's press enter, and here's the response we get. Okay, a little bit better than last time, yet not quite exactly what we want to work with. So let's take it one step further and look at our next prompt. Now let's take a look at two-shot prompting. Two-shot prompting is when you give the AI two examples to work with. So let's modify our previous prompt a little bit, and we will add two lines in this case. We'll say, how do you dress stylish for a work conference where big clients are attending? The dress code is business casual with jackets optional and dress shoes. Press enter and interesting. And we can see the AI is giving us somewhat of a similar response, yet getting a little more detailed based off that second prompt we gave it. And there is your two shot prompting. Okay, let's look at our next prompt type, something known as few shot prompting. Few shot prompting is when you give the AI several examples to work with. So let's take our previous example of dressing stylish, essentially go with the same text, yet add in one more line of, I often style my hair in various ways, which one will be best? So we'll press enter and let's see what the AI comes back with. Interesting, not too bad, looks like we're getting somewhere. So you may have noticed a few interesting things are happening. One, our answers are getting a little more refined. Two, you may have noticed the AI is detecting the type of pattern we're using and responding in kind. The pattern that we're using is I set the stage and describe my examples by using a numbered list. And the AI is responding by using a numbered list pattern. All right, let's rewind a little bit and do a quick commentary on that magic phrase, step by step, just to make things a little more official. That phrase, step by step, is technically defined as zero shot chain of thought prompting in the prompt engineering world. We've already looked at zero prompt. Chain of thought prompting is when you ask the AI to explain its rationale, reasoning, or how it got to the answer it provided. Yet at this stage, you're better off not worrying about these definitions. Rather, just to reiterate, 
the importance of knowing and integrating that phrase step-by-step will really take your prompts and results to a higher level. Let's wrap up this course by giving you this concluding thought to take with you whenever you work with an AI. Sure, it may be able to do all kinds of cool stuff, but in the end, the AI is really just a big autocomplete engine. And by autocomplete, we mean this. Whenever you go to Google and start typing, it gives you some suggestions. The only difference is the AI is like an autocomplete combined with an atomic accelerator. It's ridiculously high powered. Once you get that concept under your belt, your understanding with how to work and interact with the AI model will be a lot easier. We hope you enjoyed this course and we'll see you in the next one.